Okay, so uh, last talk before lunch, I think. Um, so I'm from the uh, Permanent Service Mean Sea Level, the PSMSL. We're the data service for tide gauges. Um, it's our 90th anniversary this year. Our roots go back to the IUGG's General Assembly um, in 1933. Um, so, ooh, next slide. There we go. Okay, um, so uh, we've got a network that kind of probably uh, has many issues that um, the other networks have in that it's uh, very good in the northern hemisphere and also nowadays very good in the eastern hemisphere as well. This kind of um, line of countries from Japan down to New Zealand have a, a, um, a network that's very dense as well. Um, uh, there has been an issue, I think, over the pandemic from a bit of a drop in um, data availability. Uh, but um, I think this is more delaying getting the data to us. Um, so hope, we're hoping that um, those issues will resolve over the um, next year or so. Um, it, it tends to be that we get you know, sent two years of data instead of one year and, and we will catch up in the end. Although we know there are some sites where there were issues uh, getting to, to places to do maintenance um, during kind of lockdown periods. Um, some of our big achievements over the past couple of years. One major thing um, is we've launched a data portal for um, sea level data measured by the technique of GNSS Infometric Reflectometry, which is it's a really good example of unexpected uses of your, um, your equipment. So with this, we're able to measure sea level directly using GNSS antennas. It's exploiting the multipath reflections you get off the surface, comparing the direct signal to the reflected signal with a bit of geom geometry, you can um, extract the sea level. This doesn't just work for water, it also works for um, any other reflective surface. So things like ice, you can use it to measure vegetation height. Um, and also uh, things like soil moisture as well. But um, we got some money through a big European uh, project, Eurosea, to get some of this data online. There's several hundred sites. Um, we're hoping to um, increase this build on it as time goes on. Um, some extra things about the site, it's not only as well as, well, sorry, let me go back. Uh, one of the things Lena mentioned earlier was that there are issues um, harvesting metadata and data from the PSMSL uh, website, which is very true. Um, but underneath all that HTML, there's actually quite a lot of structured uh, JSON site uh, files, XML files. Um, so for this GNSSIR portal, we've tried to make sure that they're available um, to you by making this page that kind of summarizes them all um, and will allow you to harvest um, those things automatically if you want to. Um, we're going to retroactively go back and do a similar thing for our main mean sea level data set as well. But Lena, Martin, I'll send you an email giving you the information of how to do that. Um, we're hoping in the future to move towards using um, a proper structure um, data servers um, that provide things like APIs to make it um, much more automatic. Um, and particularly for the case of this GNSS IR data, we're, we're hoping to make it near real time as well. Um, we're also working to uh, link to things like persistent, uniquely defined identifiers for things like GNSS receivers. So the kind of things Kirsten was talking about earlier on in order to um, link all our metadata together so so y you know exactly which GNSS receiver we have extracted this data from um, and making the procedure more traceable. Um, finally, just a comment to operators of GNSS sites. If you want us to um, have a go at this technique using your data, then please, please turn on your signal to noise ratio um, recording, put that in your RINEX files and record as many constellations and frequencies as you possibly can. Um, if you can email us with photographs and things like that, because we have to filter out um, which direction reflections are coming from to, you know, take out obstructions from things like piers or places where um, boats might regularly moor. Um, 
Another big improvement we've made recently, uh, this is working with our colleagues at Sonal, which is based at the um, University of La Rochelle. Uh, a comment we regularly get is how do we link the um, uh, relative sea level data provided by our tide gauges to um, uh, data measured from um, geocentric means for things like satellite altimetry. Um, it's used, our data is used in a lot of calibration and validation of satellite data. Um, so the way we've done this um, previously is by getting information from Sunel about the IGNSS, GNSS reprocessing, camp reprocessing campaigns, and they provided us a um, uh, ellipsoidal height of the tide gauge, our tide gauge datum, and also an estimate of how uh, the, the vertical land movement at the site. Um, but the issue we had was um, initially they were only re re uh, giving us the results from one of the reprocessing centers. And uh, as you can see from this example in Brest, in um, uh, Northwest France, they, the results can vary quite considerably. Um, the heights and the velocity um, is quite often outside the, the um, error estimates for it. So now they're providing us the um, results from all the reprocessing uh, centers that they have information for um, to give a, a better indication of the uncertainties involved in, in, in these um, calculations. We still need to do more work on kind of um, providing, I guess, education for our users and how to use these results. Um, but hopefully that will come in the future. Some final other news, as I mentioned earlier, we're trying, to, we're really trying to make an effort to improve our met metadata, make it more useful for both humans and machines. So doing things like um, assigning a DOI to the data set, this thing about proper data servers, the ones we're looking at, use, we're using a uh, ERDAP, uh, ones developed by NOAA that are quite commonly used now in oceanography, but um, they've got APIs and what have you, so should be uh, perfectly harvestable. We may, may need to do some work uh, with the geodesy community about the uh, data standards we're using, but I'm sure we can come up with a solution. Things like making sure we've got persistent identifiers for all our tide gauges. Um, there's kind of a big issue there about defining exactly what a tide gauge is. Are you talking about the site? Are you talking about the individual sensors? But um, that we, we're kind of coming up for solutions for that. Um, also, things like making sure all our uh, parameters have um, come from defined vocabularies, so things like standard names. At the moment, we're working with the CF standard for climate forecasting. Again, that's based in climatology and oceanography, but we can make sure it's transferable to other areas too. Uh, the last announcement is that we have um, some big meetings coming up in November to celebrate our 90th anniversary. We're planning to host a big uh, sea level meeting, including a kind of a portion of public lectures. And the other major thing is we've got some money from IAP, so to produce some best practice on tidal analysis, um, which this is oceanographic tidal analysis, um, which uh, is kind of a thing we've noted is as there's been a big need for. Um, so that's all I've got. Thank you for your attention. And um, 